he was like, all right, when I go to LA, who's gonna handle all my business for me? You know what I mean? Pac could do something like that and then to turn around and go, me and my big mouth, I was just tripping. Do not think that you're the only one that's having a hard time, okay? I'm having a hard time at my level. There's always different levels to it. We all having a hard time. I knew him, so I knew what he was about. If he felt the way about something, like, but I didn't think he was gonna go that hard. Like, the well fucking mm -hmm. with, like, probably one of the hardest diss tracks ever. I'm not even gonna have to duct tape you. It's gonna be easy work. I wouldn't tell a lie to just promote my own greatness. We all know the tragic tale of Biggie Smalls, but what if there's more to it than meets the eye? In this video, we're diving into the revelations from none other than Lil Cease, who's about to spill the beans on what really went down before Biggie's untimely demise. Now, you might think that the notorious drive-by was the cause of Biggie's death, but Lil Cease tells a different story. According to him, the Brooklyn rapper's death wasn't a random act of violence. The alleged killer, who remains unidentified by the police to this day, was lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. The truth might not be what we thought it was all along, and hints are pointing toward the possibility of Diddy's involvement in clearing the evidence. Stay tuned for more updates on this intriguing revelation. Without further ado, let's begin. A few months back, some fresh details emerged about the Biggie case. In February 2023, a former bodyguard of Diddy dropped some intriguing insights into the tragic death of Biggie. He insisted that the murder that occurred in March 1997 wasn't a typical drive-by shooting. This bodyguard, Gene Deal, was part of Diddy's security crew during the 90s. In a candid chat with The Art of Dialogue, he expressed frustration with how movies and documentaries have often portrayed the events leading up to Biggie's death. Well, Deal firmly asserted that the tragic end of the Brooklyn rapper wasn't your typical drive-by scenario. He firmly believed that the unknown assailant, yet to be uncovered by the police, had been waiting before striking. Can't stand all the falsehoods they put out there. It's frustrating because they're taking cues from folks who weren't even present, he passionately expressed, though he stressed that he didn't want to make this about race. He continued, there wasn't any drive-by, that car was just sitting there on the corner. The stories they spin aren't the real deal and now people are buying into it. Every biggie movie, they label it as a drive-by. But when the witness tells you the car was parked on the corner, it makes you wonder, that car might have been there all night. Gene Deal also reminisced about the fateful night when he rushed to help Biggie after his GMC Suburban was riddled with bullets by a black Chevy Impala driver. This horrifying incident unfolded at a red light near the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, where the bad boy sensation had just been to a Soul Train Awards after party. For a while, there's been talk about Diddy's potential involvement in the murder of Biggie. Some argue that Puff might have ordered a hit on Tupac and Biggie met his end as payback. Others speculate about even more complex and mysterious plots. Biggie's mother, Valletta Wallace, seems to suggest something fishy involving Diddy. In a 2005 memoir titled Biggie, Valletta Wallace remembers her son, Christopher Wallace, aka Notorious Big. She claims that Diddy and rapper Lil' Kim exploited her son. Wallace writes, I'm glad he's not here to see how they've manipulated his image and his name. In his lifetime, Biggie partied and made millions alongside his producer and boss, Diddy, as well as his on and off girlfriend, rapper Kimberly Lil' Kim Jones. However, Wallace's memoir raises questions about their true intentions. Biggie, known for hits like One More Chance and Big Papa, tragically lost his life in a 1997 shooting in Los Angeles. He was just 24 years old. Since his passing, Biggie has been the subject of countless tributes. Diddy has frequently referenced him in their music, with some songs named in his honor. Wallace also recalls an incident where the often provocatively dressed rapper Lil' Kim allegedly took things from her New Jersey home during a magazine interview. When Wallace saw the magazine article, she was shocked. The first picture I saw was Kim wearing my son's mink coat, holding his chain and wearing his hat. I felt violated. Biggie's close friend and fellow rapper Lil Cease witnessed the event and shed light on what happened that night. He said a car rolled up and started shooting. The car didn't say anything, it just opened fire. According to Lil Cease, Diddy's car ran a red light while Biggie's driver was told to stop. This decision gave the shooter a chance to target Biggie. One theory that's never going away is that Diddy set up Biggie because Biggie started writing songs for other artists so that he could get some publishing rights. Diddy owned the publishing of Biggie's albums, and Biggie writing for other artists was his way of getting around that. 
The New York native also scouted for talent to put on his Big Beat record label instead of Bad Boy. This is why Junior Mafia signed with Big Beat, not Bad Boy. Biggie was doing a joint venture with Lance Rivera and running his record label. He was preparing to leave Bad Boy as soon as he met his contractual obligations. According to some people, Diddy and Biggie were not homies. It was never a partnership. That was all for show. The reality was it was a boss versus employee relationship dynamic between Diddy and Biggie. Diddy was the boss. Biggie got jerked around the same way everyone else on Bad Boy got jerked around. Except Biggie got set up on his way out. Biggie and his entourage went to a Soul Train Awards after party sponsored by Quincy Jones and Vibe magazine at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Miracle Mile on the night of his death. Diddy later recalled that none of his Bad Boy Records peers felt the posh area posed any danger. Despite the fire department shutting things down for being overcrowded at 12.30 a.m., Biggie left in good spirits after posing for pictures with fans. Trickling into three cars, Diddy and his bodyguards filled the lead SUV, while Big and his crew jumped into a Suburban, both trailed by security in a Chevrolet Blazer. Biggie and his security were left idling on red after the Bad Boy founder rushed through a yellow light on Wilshire Boulevard and Fairfax Avenue. Sitting in the passenger seat, that's when a white Toyota Land Cruiser wedged itself between the two cars, and a Chevrolet Impala pulled up alongside the wrapper to fire four shots. An hour into March 9th, Biggie Smalls was dead among his entire crew. No one was as badly affected by Biggie's death as Lil Cease. The story of Lil Cease and Biggie Smalls began in the gritty neighborhoods of Brooklyn, New York. Both young men came from tough backgrounds navigating the challenges of poverty, crime, and adversity. Born as James Lloyd in 1977, Lil Cease hailed from Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, while Biggie was born in the neighboring Clinton Hill in 1972. They were brought up amidst the turbulence of the 1980s crack epidemic, a time when their surroundings were fraught with danger and temptation. Despite their differences in age and background, Lil Cease and Biggie quickly forged a deep bond. They shared their dreams of rap stardom and their struggles, joys, and fears. They found solace in each other's company and the shared aspiration of escaping the harsh realities of their Brooklyn neighborhoods. While the friendship between Lil Cease and Biggie Smalls flourished, the rap world was embroiled in a fierce and tragic rivalry between the East Coast and West Coast hip-hop scenes. The East Coast, led by artists like Biggie and Jay-Z, and the West Coast, represented by Tupac Shakur and Dr. Dre, were locked in a bitter feud leading to violence and loss. Lil Cease and Biggie found themselves caught in the crossfire of this feud. Tupac, a former friend of Biggie's, had accused him of orchestrating a 1994 shooting in which he was wounded. The tension escalated, and Tupac's untimely death in 1996 fueled the rivalry. Biggie, too, would tragically lose his life in Los Angeles just months later. The loss of Biggie was a devastating blow to Lil Cease. It took away his friend and mentor and left a void in the rap world that would never be filled. Biggie's music continues to be celebrated and cherished by fans around the globe. His lyrical legacy lives on through the countless artists he influenced, and his songs remain timeless classics that define an era in hip-hop. The notorious Big will forever be remembered as a rap icon, a masterful storyteller, and a symbol of what can be achieved in the face of adversity. His impact on music and popular culture is immeasurable, and his memory endures through the art he created during his too short life. And that's a wrap-up on our conversation about Lil Cease's revelations regarding Diddy and the circumstances surrounding Biggie's tragic death. What are your thoughts on this new perspective? Do you believe Diddy had a role in clearing evidence of Biggie's murder? We're eager to hear your insights, so please share your comments below. Your perspectives and opinions are valuable to us.